I'm not even going to try to look like it's a different day, okay? But it's the next day. <laughs> yes, I record a few of these all at once because it's just the easier way to do it. But I give them out every single day. So, hi, if you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're coming back, I'm really glad you're here today. This is a good one. This is such a good one. This is going to just make you feel so wonderful when it's all said and done. So my verse that I'm doing today is Romans chapter 8, and we're going to read verse 35 through 39. This is Paul's writing. Who shall separate us from the love of Messiah? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword, as it is written, for this verse 36, for your sake, we are being put to death all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Verse 37, but in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. 38, for I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, that's verse 39, nor depth, nor any created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Messiah Yeshua our Lord. Wow! Meaning, God's love for believers is so unshakable and cannot be severed by any external force or circumstance. Romans 8 verses 35 to 39 affirms that believers are secure in God's love, even in the midst of suffering or hardship. This love is a rock solid foundation and nothing, underline nothing, can separate us from it. How can I apply this to my life? Knowing that nothing can cause God to stop loving me brings me enormous security. Knowing that God loves me in the middle of a meltdown or in the middle of a mess of my own making means I can clean up that mess and move out of that meltdown not feeling horrible that I've lost God's love for me. He will come down into the pit the hole I've dug for myself and pull me out of it. Being secure in my heart and mind of God's never-ending love for me is one of the greatest revelations I have had as a believer. Satan is blocked from having any power or say-so in this area. Being completely confident in God's love, no matter the circumstance, kicks Satan to the curb and into the gutter where he belongs. What amazing victory that is over the enemy. Amen and amen. This is the most important thing that we as believers need to grasp onto. When I was going to Utah to meet my beautiful new adopted Christian daughter, we met through YouTube. She came at me from a different person who was talking about me all the time on her on her videos. Nothing negative. She was just talking about me a lot. And so it got this girl's curiosity up to come over and check out my YouTube channel. And from the minute she watched me on YouTube, she's like, there's a connection here. I feel this. Well, long story short, we ended up communicating with each other and we just love each other. She's my adopted daughter and I'm her adopted mother because we have holes in our life in that area. And that it's helping to fill those missing parts of our life that we are longing for but can't have because these missing parts don't believe in God. And when you have missing parts that don't believe in God, you can't be in a relationship with them. It, it just, it, you just can't. It's impossible. Well, before I went to Utah, I used to question God's love for me. I even had a real breakdown there for about a week because I wasn't hearing from him. And where are you? And why aren't I hearing from you? And I, I hadn't done anything that I knew of to have him not, you know, talk to me. Don't you love me anymore? And it's like, oh my word. I mean, I was down in the pit. Well, thank God, God pulled me out of the pit and let me know that, no, you're, you know, you are very much loved. And I got out of the pit by watching somebody else on YouTube talk about this very same thing as a minister to me. 
And I was like, oh good, I'm not the only one that goes there. I didn't want to doubt God's love for me. Because when we do, that's an open door for Satan to come in and just wreak havoc in our lives. He can just come in and wreak havoc. And then we don't want to have a, a relationship with God anymore because we don't think he loves us anymore. So we're just going to go out and sin and we don't care and, and dig, 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 dig that grave deeper and deeper and deeper over our heads where God's got to really come down there and yank us out of it. So I go to Utah and we spent our four days together and it was just an amazing, I'll link the interview that I did with her below or up here somewhere that I did with this beautiful person who's got a testimony that will knock your socks off. And I'm not kidding you. She blew my mind on what she had to say. And I left there with the knowledge, the knowledge that no matter what I do, God will not stop loving me even to the point of my walking away from him. See, we separate ourselves from God. It's not the other way around. The devil wants to make us think it's the other way around by we're not good enough. We aren't this. We aren't that. We have to do this first. We have to do that first before God will love us. No, God has loved us since the creation of the universe. He's loved every single one of us since the creation of the universe. It's us who chose to walk away from him in the fall. And it's our sin nature that causes us not to want to be in a relationship with him now. God is never the one who walks away, ever. And how do we know this? Because he sent his son to die on a cross so that we can never be separated from God again. Seriously, he died on a cross so that we can be redeemed back to God. That's how much he loves us, that he sent himself in human form to be tortured, die on a cross, go into the real pit of hell for us, and then resurrect out of the dead and be seated, seated, blah, 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 and be seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us. That's all Jesus does, constantly interceding for us. Why? Because he loves us. Why? Because God loves us. Why? Because he wants every single one of us in heaven. Satan doesn't want you to hear this message. That's why he turned my mic off. And I have to re -re I had to re-record this message. I'm not going to let Satan win ever. And I'm not the only one that this happens to on YouTube. Everybody who does biblical teachings on YouTube, somehow, some way, their videos won't upload, or their lives won't go live, or they have technical issues. It's Satan coming in and saying, nope, I'm not going to let you do this. Well, I just say to Satan, that's on. That's on. <laughs> so please, please, please understand, understand that there is nothing you can do to be separated from God. Nothing you can do. Even as a non-believer, you are, you, you are separating yourself from God by saying there is no God. You saying there is no God doesn't make it true. It doesn't make it true. Because there are many, 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 many thousands of us who know there is a God. We know it. We feel it. He literally affects our lives every single day. I live alone. I have lived completely alone. I'm in my eighth year of living completely alone. No friends around me. No family around me. The only thing I do is go to Walmart and pick up grocery orders and come home. For the most part that's it. I don't travel very much. I don't go anywhere. I don't do anything. You would think after eight years that I'd be ready for straight jacket city with a crayon between my toes in a padded cell, but I'm not. Why? Because I've got three people living in my house with me, God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And they love me and they talk to me and they keep me company. And I can talk out loud all day long in this house and people might think I'm talking to myself, but I'm not. I'm having conversations with the Lord. I'm never alone. And not to mention the angels that are around me all the time, ministering to me when they need to. I'm never alone. I've had demons in here. I'm never alone. <laughs> Even with those, I'm never alone. They get kicked to the curb. Mm -hmm. They sure do. The minute they come in, out you go. I'll feel them. I'll feel them in the room. It's like, nope. Mm-mm. In the name of Jesus, you got to go and you got to go right now. They have no power here. But get this into your heart. I want you to read Romans chapter 8, verse 35 to 39 over and over and over and over again until you finally believe that you know, that you know, that you know that there is not one thing that you can do to separate you from God. 
except you, except your flesh. So if you're whining and crying that God doesn't love you, that's, that's Satan lying to you because he does. All right, everybody. I love you. You know God loves you. You know he does because it says in his word. It says in his word. It says right here. And guess what? I played lawyer for 11 years. There's not one thing in here that a lawyer can argue against. Why? Because it's the truth. It's the truth. When I went into court, you know how I won? With the truth. Mm -hmm. That's how I won. With the truth. The truth will set you free. And this is the honest truth. I love you, everybody. See you tomorrow. Oh, thumbs up and comments. Thank you. Thank you for your for the support in the comment section. I am really, really, really appreciative of that. I am so appreciative of that. I needed to say that in this video. Thank you so, so much.